Hey everybody, and welcome back to Dyson with Death. So, <clears throat> you see this this web with this huge, huge spider on it, and you guys start to back up to get out of the way when out from behind you crawls another and another and another, and you guys are now surrounded by these massive spiders, webs in one direction open swamp to another, bushes to a third, and open swamp to the fourth. So like, um, east is the are these bushes with massive webs on the other side of them. South is just heavy bush. No idea what's, what's beyond that. North and, uh, no, sorry. yeah, east is the, the, the bush with spiders. South is bush. West and north is open terrain. But let's right. roll initiative. We're just going to do group initiative because there's oh so many of us. Spider ambush. Ouch. And we are taken unawares. Or at least... Oh, yeah. Last... <laughs> that is no good um, for so you there's guys. Three archers behind me getting probably getting ambushed by the little spiderlings. And oh, then... these aren't little spiderlings. These are all like six feet spiders. Oh, ooh. Yeah, this How is how far is the web in front of us? Uh, you have just started to pull back, so uh, you're on the other side of like a, a four foot bush, and then the web is another seven feet beyond that. So that's that's the distance. The spiders go first. Let me move my pizza. Um, the huge spiders leap on the archers or try to. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Ooh. With two of them missing, one of them lands on one of the archers and sinks its nasty, sharp teeth in for two points of damage. Yeah. Um, by the way, I'm casting a spell. Okay. I'm turning the words to sleep and going for my rose petals. Um. Just got to look up the some stuff. Da, 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 da. Uh, one of the, the, the one guard that gets bit screams in pain as the spider sucks into him deeply with his nasty, nasty teeth. And the guard just drops to the ground. Um, Dead from the wound or poisoned, it looks like? Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, it's screams and terror. You have no idea what it is. The spider in front takes a, a pounce at Bohep, and you can't really see anything, but you hear Bohep, you hear his shield whack into something, and him scream out, Not today, spider! And then it is the party's turn. All right. Um, you can roll your attack rolls. I'm going to go ahead and make my wild surge. 17. No surge, but a plus one to spellcasting. I don't think that does anything for sleep. Um, it increases the duration. Yeah. All right. Um, two d four, five hit die of creatures. Ooh. Is that one or two of the spiders? Two of the spiders. So how many came from behind? Three. Uh, Bohep stabs the one in front for max damage. Which does not kill the spider. And you sleep two of the ones in back. Uh, Phoenix goes to stab one of the ones that has not slept. Misses badly. Or the one that's not slept. And the archers take a half move back. They like bump. Basically they run into you trying to retreat from the spiders from behind. And fire some arrows. Misses. And a hit and a critical hit. Pumping that arrow for 10 points of damage, or that spider for 10 points of damage. Um, and it is limping and gimping. Uh, give me another initiative roll. Yeah. Just a nice d10. Six. 
you go second. Bohep's spider attacks him again, getting his teeth sunk into Bohep's shoulder for four points of damage. Um, I'm probably scrambling with the archers to try and get as far away from the spider as possible. And the other spider in back crawls towards Phoenix, tries to get his teeth in it, but Phoenix manages to block the, the spider's approach with a the middle midsection of a spear, tosses him back, turns around to stab him, and stabs the spider for two points of damage, bringing it to the ground. Bohep takes his attack and natural 20s the spider in front of him, dropping it to the ground as well. There are now just two sleeping spiders before you. Um, I approach the um, the guy that fell. I bravely step forward and inspect the, my fallen comrade. Uh, he has this nasty, nasty bite mark on the side of his chest that is just oozing blood. Um, I guess I'll staunch the bleeding, but I was imagining that it's poison that is causing this. So 28 on my int check if he actually was wounded and needed to be stabilized. The bleeding stops. So he was, it did actually deal enough damage to... Mm -hmm. We'll see. All right. I, um, yeah, I got, did the men come close to me and the sleeping spider corpses, the sleeping spiders? Um, as you're staunching the blue, the wound, they draw short swords and go up to the sleeping spiders and just start going all Brutus on them. Just as planned. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. So now we got another unconscious body. I'm just going to get a whole troop of these guards that Bohep rejects. Bohep looks at the guy, looks up at you, and goes, You're not going to try and save this one too, are you? No, no offense, Phoenix. But uh, we don't have a wagon, and these motherfuckers are, have nasty, nasty poison. You may have stopped the bleeding, but he's not going to survive the night. Um, I'm going to give him an... I say, well, we can be back to town by nightfall. He's not going to survive the trip back to town. And if we have to carry his ass, we probably won't either. Mm. I look to Phoenix. For some moral judgment. He offers none. I want to give... Uh, can I inspect him? Mm -hmm. Like, I guess I'm not... Don't know anything about poison, but do you want me to do perception and um, to guess whether I mean like is he starting to like swell up or what would a healing what check be? Well, allow you make a healing check with a minus five on it. Um, where's my players? Is healing int or wisdom based? I think it should be int based. So give me an int check. At minus eight, because I think a healing proficiency is already at minus three. Healing is wisdom at minus two. Okay, uh, then give me a wisdom check at minus seven. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Nine. Nope. Nope. You have okay. no idea. Uh, you guys, give me a help. Give me a hand with the body, and I get Phoenix and one of the archers to help me prop up the body and start dragging it back towards the trail. Bohep sighs, and you guys grab the body and start hauling it back. So now I've got two archers in the rear, Bohep in the lead, me, Phoenix, and Archer. Mm -hmm. Can't wait, me. I guess one archer in the rear. Me, Phoenix, and Archer carrying the body of an archer. Right. Okay. Or like taking shifts carrying it. Right, right. Up in the lead. You guys managed to drag the unconscious man who was later identified as Fred. 
um, back to the road uneventfully. You do not run into any more terror. I mean, you run into some sp um, some smaller spiders and some snakes, but nothing else. Okay. So we make it back to the trail. Probably just start heading back to town. Cut our losses. Um, can I? I'm going to keep a keep monitoring the guy's pulse and status. Okay. You get an hour and a half past camp. Um when I need a perception check. Still probably like late afternoon. Mm-hmm. Eesh, the rolls are not in my favor. Mm-hmm. I have not passed one perception check today, I don't think. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not you guys are not surprised, but you are taken unawares. So no penalties or anything. Um, as a group of lizard men fall upon your party moving through the swamp. It is appears to be four lizard men charging from the front, spears in hand. Running down the path? Running straight down the path at you guys. Initiative? Um, yeah, initiative. Seven. Oof, they go first. Set the body down. Lizard men. They come, and the Bohep is in front, so three of them immediately surround him and stab towards him with their spears. Miss, miss, and miss. While two others move past, and who is right after Bohep? Uh, it's just a mess after Bohep. Like, there, there's three of us all taking shifts. At the, I don't know if you want to... Yeah. You roll, uh, you give me a, a D3. One, it's you after him. Two, it's Phoenix after him. Three, it's the archer after him. Two is Phoenix. Phoenix. So it's probably me and the archer are in the middle carrying a body, and Phoenix is right behind right. Bohep. The lizardmen curve around Bohep. You know, three of them clash with him. Two others curve around Bohep and go after Phoenix and make stabs at him, but they all miss. Uh, Phoenix's armor is just too thick. Hmm? I'm uttering the words to Magic Missile. All right, give me a wild surge. Check. 16. That is, is that plus one to level. Nice. Um, Which actually doesn't change anything with Magic Missile, I don't think. No, you need a plus two to level at this point. But give me two darts, and are you targeting the same creature or two different creatures? Um, I'm going to shoot two at one of them that's next to Bohap for five points of damage. Okay. And I will leap, slump, the body and the, slump the body onto the floor and pull back feet and also look around to make sure there's no other lizard men coming from any other directions bohep takes a stab crits one of them well done bohep for six points of damage which is insignificant the guy passes his save i guess it's not insignificant it's just not a kill um phoenix takes his stab at one of them and hits or one point of damage. <sighs> Strong lizard men. And the archer in the back fires his two shots. Um, one of them is a crit for nine points of damage. Against the one that Bo, uh, that Phoenix had hit, does not kill it, but wounds it pretty badly. And then you hit one with a magic missile as well, for five. Only five. Okay. Uh, the other archer gets one shot off because I'm going to say he's carrying the body and can't really do too much else, but he does get a hit on one of them fighting Bohep for six points of damage to dropping the one that was being focus fired by the archers in Bohep. Um, bringing it to initiative round. Seven again. And they get a, they get a one. Three on Bohep still. 
their spears plunge towards him, and one of them cackles in common. Die, you puny humans! Uh, but their spears cannot pierce Bohep's thick... What is it? Uh, Chainmail with a shield armor? And the one against Phoenix slashes wildly at him with the point of his spear, and it falls short. Bohep goes. He takes two stabs with the spear. One of them is a hit. Dropping the, the lizardman most in front of him. Phoenix... It's another crit. Holy shit, Phoenix, you're not that bad today. Dropping the Lizardman against him. Uh, what do you do? Um, I'm going to make an attack. So you said, which Lizardman? There's Lizardman attacking Phoenix right in front of me? Or did you say that one just fell? Dead. Dead. So there's Two on Bohep. Two on Bohep. All right, yeah, so I'll step forward into the melee and make an attack with my quarterstaff. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Give me a saving throw oh. versus death. <laughs> oh, nope. Give me an attack roll against Bohep. <laughs> you swing and miss the Lizard Man, and your quarterstaff like, whizzes over Bohep's head, almost Probably cracking like the, him the in the face. And at the end of it is backfiring and whirling around wildly, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. freaking Bohep out. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> The archers regain control of my miss, miss, my balance. hit and crit, useless crit, pass save, and the hit. The hit drops one, the crit does three points of damage, bringing one of those lizard men to that much HP. And that's it. Give me initiative roll. Oh, sorry. Um, Phoenix goes and hits, but does not crit, and does a nice fat five points of damage to the remaining lizardman, who <clears throat> is seems to be surprised that his colleagues have disappeared so quickly. Well, four lizardmen did charge a group of five. Bats. Five lizardmen charged group. They. They were really counting on their surprise roll, and it did not go in their favor, even with their bonuses. So we get a, we get a five on initiative this round. You can go first. All right. Swing wildly again to no effect. I hope that my mercenaries <laughs> are more effective in combat than me. Yeah, they rip him to shreds before he can get anything else done. And with a, a quick pause, Bohip looks around and says, Everyone okay? Anyone... Anyone hurt? Uh, that went much better than last time. Yeah. I go over to look at the body that we discarded on the ground and take this opportunity to and to check his vitals. He is... How long has it been? He is pale. Pale as a ghost. Any pulse? You can't find one. Well, I think Freddy has passed. Yeah, I thought so. There will be no reviving this one. Would anyone like to say a few words? Let's get out of here. I will take a flask of that oil that I just gathered and pour it over the guy's body. Just do this right in the middle of the road. And take a step back draw my flaming sword and catch the or poke it to the tip to the edge of the of the oil slick I just just spilled so you just cover the body in oil and yeah I take one of my flasks of, of tar okay the body kind of sizzles and simmers and you're actually surprised the flames are not as high or as bright as when you <gasps> used oil flasks like for candles or for a I'm sorry your lantern but uh -huh. the the fire burns much longer you know it doesn't just and then fade it it's a slow shimmering burning not shimmering um simmering burn that just lasts for a long time yeah. i sheed my sword i look up are the mercenaries 
sort of watching, or are they? Yeah, they're all watching, and on? as you sheathe your sword, they all look at it. Um, give me a charisma check. Nope. Do I not look badass, or am I not even sure what that charisma check was for? Don't worry about it then. <laughs> Alright. So, yeah. I probably will watch the body burn until Bohep says it's time to go. Uh, a few moments pass and Bohep says, I, I think we should get a move on. Oh, yes. Right. Right. And I trot off. Okay. Once again, archers in the rear. Phoenix and Phoenix and Bohep with me. Okay. The rest of the journey, I believe, is pretty uneventful. Yeah. You guys managed to make it back to town uh, before nightfall. And the everyone except for Phoenix heads right back to the Traveler's Inn. I'm a little bit more somber than when they left this morning. Yeah, it didn't go according to planned. It's not dark. It's dark after we... When does the sun set? Like, do I get a glimpse out into the swamp? No, you get there well before... Like, an hour and a half before the sun goes down. Yeah. And Phoenix walks with you as the the others leap, head off to the other bar and says, So, mm -hmm. um, we head back tomorrow? Maybe worth taking a peek at night, just from the walls. See if we can see the light. <clears throat> I count out. Um, I probably yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna count out forty silver and give it to Phoenix here. He pushes it back and says, "You saved my life. I owe you." Suppose I just feel, I said, it's what Bohep got, and you were just as effective as him out there. <laughs> uh, you flatter me. And he, you notice he, like, takes uh, about seven silver from you, but leaves the rest in your hand. Okay. Whatever. Room and board. Um, give me a few more hours of your time. I... I don't think there will be any trouble, but I just want to want to look out into the into the maw tonight. Okay. And w wouldn't mind having a blade at my side or another one. So what do you do? Um, so I'd like to. Uh, did the gates close behind us? Is there any way we could watch some, the swamp from the from the top of the wall, or is that restricted? You're gonna have to find out. I mean, so I'll be hanging. I mean, it's an hour and a half before sunset. Mm -hmm. What is the, what are things looking like at the gate? Do I see a staircase? The, the gate does close after you. There are a few staircases uh, around because it, you know, it's a semicircular wall. And so there'll mm -hmm. be staircases occasionally that just like run up along the side of the wall or one that'll like zigzag back and forth up the side of the wall. Well, Phoenix has been here before. So, I mean, I'll, I'll ask him. So do the guards patrol the wall? Yeah, a lot of archers up there. Keeping things out of the swamp. Well, keeping them in the swamp. City watch. Mm-hmm. Think they'd mind if we stood up there and had a look? Well, you're not supposed to, but I think nodding at your purse, that might make a difference. I mean, it's not going to hurt anyone. You'll just have to make it quick. Alright, um, so I'll wait till sundown. Sun does go down. Um, and find a staircase up to the wall. Alright. Um, you get up to the wall, and one of the guards up there goes, Hey, 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 hey get, get back down, you're not allowed up here. Uh, pardon me, I am, I'm a tourist. Uh, 
what is what is the fee to view them all from the viewing deck? And I pull, start pulling silver out of my coin purse. A uh, five minute look will cost you ten silver. Ten silver? <laughs> yeah, whatever. I give him a fistful of silver and brush past him up to the top of the wall. He takes it greedily and chuckles to himself, um, pocketing the money, and you look out over the wall. The mall is pretty dark. There's not much to see, um, although from probably, this height you can see can. well over all the trees. Yeah, I was going to say we're, what are we, like a mile or so from the, from the swamp? Mm-hmm. Now, the wall does go above all the trees, and the area between the, the town and the swamp has been cleared, giving you a clear line of sight to it. You notice that um, there is a, a soft, a very soft glow in the sky on the other side of the mall, which you presume to be the light from Keygate reflecting on the clouds. Hmm. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm Give specifically me a... look, looking for a point of light, you know, just south yeah. of Vapari. It's probably a couple of miles out there, so it may may not be very visible, or visible at all. Give me a perception. perception check at plus five. Plus five? Nope! <laughs> Can't catch a break. You have literally uh, failed every perception check you've rolled today. I have, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you right. don't see anything. I the view for a few minutes. Most expensive view of my life. Yep. And I eventually head back down the wall. Okay. Yep. It was worth a shot. You get back down to the base of the wall, and... Yeah. Um... I guess I'm going to head to... I'm going to find a room for the night. I guess the, the elf would again. Okay. Another five, five silver for room and board. Yep, yep, yep. Hmm. And that's when he realized he needs glasses. <laughs> well then. Yeah, I don't know. I take my... Take my meal, go to bed. I guess I'll set out again in the morning, but... Okay. Uh, morning comes. Do you go grab Bo Hep and his boys? Yeah, I'll start with Phoenix. If I can... Does he uh, does he, he crashes with you at the Elfwood. Okay. Does he get his own room? Yeah. The seven silver I gave him? Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, yeah. So him and I, I guess we, yeah, we'll stop. I mean, it's right on the way out of town. So we'll stop by the Traveler's Inn okay. and see what Bohep and the boys are up to. Um, after you guys had paid for your food and drink for the night, Bohep, or not Bohep, um, Phoenix had run off to give the rest of his money to the, the temple that cared for him. <sighs> Sucker. Maybe he'll become a paladin. <laughs> not likely. Okay. Uh, you meet up with Bohep and them the next morning at the tavern. They seem a little sullen at the loss of their friend. Um, yeah. But, yeah. And he says, oh, Fenric, you're not thinking about heading back out again tonight, are you? Or today, I mean? Uh, that would be the plan. He looks around at his guys. Uh, the silver's not good. I can find other mercenaries. Can I, can I see, speak to you outside for just a moment? Sure, let's go. He walks out with you and goes, Now, my the rest of my troop doesn't want to do it. If you want to go out, poke around again like yesterday, I'll go with you. But the other is a... They'd rather live to see another day than, than get fat and wealthy. Fair enough. Uh, 
how about yeah five gold for you to accompany me and phoenix out onto the out into the maw again okay let's do it all right i hand him 50 silver and uh, he goes in and grabs his gear and the three of you depart yeah so i think we were sort of north west of the campsite last time i guess this time i'm gonna try a little like southwest of the of the campsite okay and same deal so walk a couple hours out of town get to the camp and then depart into the maw into the swamp i guess the whole thing is the maw the whole thing is the maw uh Uh, by the way, I would just memorize the same spells again. Okay. You head out into the... As you're heading towards the, the camp, you're almost, you're almost all the way there when you hear this sloshing, goopy, gross noise of something like plodding through water. Uh, left or right? To the... From the right from the direction, from the west. Yeah. What do you do? I turn, do I, I turn, do I see anything? No, it, it sounds like a, it sounds like a large thing at a reasonable distance, you know, too far out to see through all the, the shrubs and brush, um, but still will, large enough to make a lot of noise. Yeah, I'll usher, um, Bohep and Phoenix to hurry up and sort of like usher them a little further along and like they'll sort of hide and wait and see what comes. So try and get out of the path of whatever's slogging through the mud and observe from afar if we can. Okay. Um, give me dexterity checks for stealthing. Uh, Fender ruins it. I Probably drop something or. Okay. You see, plodding out from from the west, um, is this pale, uh, kind of like tannish with a little hint of red in it. Figure. It looks like a a person. Maybe uh, it's like a, a a person larger than you've seen before in your life. It's a humanoid, must be about eight feet tall, uh, but there's something strange about it. It's the, its flesh is kind of tan with the hints of red, but so are its clothes and its armor and everything about it. It's all the same color, like all the way through and through. You, you can't notice a single change. You can't even, there's no glint of steel. It all seems to be made out of the same kind of... Uh, or covered in the same dingy, tannish, reddish something. Um, How far off is it? 80 feet. Does it appear to notice us or be heading towards nope. us? It or makes it to the, the path, pauses, and then just like turns 90 degrees, almost mechanically, and starts heading south. Towards us, probably. I mean, we're probably... 80 feet to the south of it, right? No, no, no. This is, uh, you're, you haven't quite made it to the camp yet. Okay, so it is... Yeah, it's camp. heading south uh, away from you. All right, I'll whisper to... Um, to Bo up that. Any idea what that is? I've never seen something like that before. Want to catch it? It's your gold. <laughs> All right. I hope let's you know get if you it, die, boys. I'm taking all your money. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's roll initiative and uh, you have surprise. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna cast a web on this guy. Okay. Rain. So I'm gonna. Eighty feet is pretty close, actually. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna leap out of the bush that I'm sitting in, yell yippee ki yay, yeehaw, and lasso this son of a bitch. I thought you were casting so, web. Yeah, web. Oh, okay, lassoing with web. Got it. Yeah, 
Um, so let's see. Ooh. Wow. Ooh, that's a wild surge, isn't it? I think that's a wild surge. Oh, yep. Yeah, we just got a wild surge. Uh-oh. I'm double-checking. Never hurts to be slightly redundant. Yeah, I checked. It's a, it's a wild surge. Nice. Give me your D100. So I'm probably... The, the range... So I'm, like, charging towards it, hurling a web out. Mm-hmm. Hucking a bit of spider web, probably from yesterday or something. Um, 15 yards per level. So I'm, like, 45 feet from it when the spell probably goes off. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and resolve that wild surge. D100 plus 3, 94. That's Target is hastened. <laughs> So it's like an AOE haste. I think it, the spell goes off normally plus the haste. Is that how wild surges work? Oh yeah, isn't I think so. I think unless it's a right. Mm. One additional effect can occur when casting level variable spells. Yeah, so the web goes off, and on top of that, then because you're you're casting the web at the creature, like that is the target of your spell. I know it's AOE, yeah. but I'm sure if there were other things in the area, they may get hastened as well. Yeah. But... So the the target is hastened. I guess it gets a saving throw versus spell to avoid it. Avoid the web, right? Yeah. Uh, well, to avoid the web and the haste, because mm -hmm. it doesn't know it's a beneficial haste spell coming in. Are these two separate saving throw versus spells? Yeah. Saving throw versus spell at a minus two penalty for the web. Okay. Uh, both of them are passed, so it is not hastened. And if it passes a web spell, what is it? What happens? Uh, no, it is. It is able to move to the edge of the web with no effect. So I don't know which direction you think it you know, would be. No, because the web spell is... I'm going to give it a penalty to dodge the web spell because you are coming from behind and it was surprised. Well, it already gets a minus two penalty. I mean, maybe... I don't know. Yeah, maybe you can give it a small penalty. Yeah, because I, I would give it a penalty of two for back attack, basically. Because he, he doesn't see it coming. Um, which is enough to catch it. The haste, I don't think it's a penalty. I don't think it... I mean, I think he should just be hasted. You just think it... Or whatever. Well, no other magical effect just auto-hits. You're always allowed a saving throw. Right? Unless with haste, you, you there's no saving throw associated with it. I don't... Why don't we read what the haste spell does? Um, spells. Haste. haste. No, saving throw, none. You're right. He is hasted. Yeah, because they're, and I guess the reverse is slow, right? Mm hmm. Wait, no. Is it? Yeah. Haste it's versus slow. I mean, it's not a reverse, it's not a reversible spell. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Bohep charges in. And. A web in the way. We caught him. <laughs> Bohep, no! <laughs> oh. So were you trying to get the web centered on him? Um, no, probably like the edge of him. Do you want the so, so do you want the web to be closer to you or further from you? Like from him backwards? Further from him backwards. So okay. potentially Bohep could get stay outside of the web and poke okay. in with the spear. So then get he stuck. gets just close enough to do that and makes a stab with his spear and stabs directly into the creature. Rolling for damage, actually 18 with all Bohep's adjustments is actually a critical hit. Nice, um, nice. He's going to need it because that, this, I don't know, on closer inspection, are you going to describe this creature for us again? I will. More detail? Uh, but let me resolve his attacks first. So that's an 11 plus 2 for specialization is a 13 damage. So Bohep plunges his spear into the sky and then tries to tug his spear out, and it gets stuck. And he goes, what the hell is this? Uh, similarly, what's the other guy's name? Phoenix, natural 17, nice. Stabs it as well. 
for 4 points of damage. So 11 of 4 is 15 points of damage total. Um, and his spear as well gets stuck. And... I'm guessing we got like a mud man or something. It, the... I'll give them strength checks on their next round to pull the spears out. Um, the... Well, initiative. And I will describe to you what is happening during initiative. Would you also please roll initiative for Phoenix? Yeah. You're just going to start uh, controlling him from now on. Okay. Um, what weapon does he use? Spear. Uh, initiative speed 6. Alright. Um... I go at 7... Phoenix goes a 10. Sorry, I go at 8. Phoenix goes a 10. Okay. Bohep is first. He gets a strength check to pull his weapon out. Uh, and passes. He wrenches free his spear. And immediately falls back towards you and goes, I don't know what the hell this thing is, but it's not made out of flesh. It's some sort of clay. Um... Bohep goes, I'm sorry, Phoenix goes at 10, you say? Yeah. Okay. This creature turns and just starts walking right towards Phoenix. It oh, rips it itself strength, through the web. Yeah. No it's problem. To get out. If his strength is between 13 and 17, he can break through one foot per round. 18, he can break through two feet per round. Yeah. He doesn't even seem slowed by the web as he rips through it and puts his hands together. I mean, he's like eight feet tall, remember, and tries to bring them down on top of Phoenix, who is still grasping onto his weapon. Natural 20. Bye, Phoenix. <laughs> Phoenix is crushed. The, the creature goes all the way down to its knees, and you just see Phoenix, like, head, spine, shoulder, torso, everything's just... And he becomes a red and pink stain on the ground. No! My... First potential henchman. Oh, I was going <laughs> to give him to you. He was so yours. You smushed him with a mud golem or something. Uh, your turn. <sighs> it's a dangerous life I live. So my um, magic missile goes off. Give me some damage. Six. Shit. Did you roll a... No, so, yeah. No, that's, so that's minus seven, one. But... So yeah. Yeah, D4 plus one. Yeah, yeah. Four damage. Four damage. Okay. You give me control of him right after he dives the, the golem. Yeah. Like, Here, have have a henchman that's engaged in melee combat with this magical construct that's got like 18 strength. <laughs> Enjoy. Give me an initiative roll. Um, I think I'm going to spend the rest of my turn shouting run. Yeah. Uh... Bohep is slowly falling back, shield up, ten. giving you cover. You go at 10. Bohep goes first, he just gives you cover. Uh, then you go, and the two of you... Does he have any backup weapon? Bohep? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, got, he pulled a spear out of it. Oh, he did? Yeah. Okay. Does the creature pursue? Uh, it does, however, it is not as fast as you... It's nice and slow, and you guys manage to escape it. It has a very slow, sad. methodical movement. Phoenix is dead. Once you guys get far enough away from it um, that it's no longer in sight and you feel safe, Bohep uh, pull, takes a look at his spear and goes, what? Like, rips some of the this stuff that's still stuck to it and goes, this is, this is clay. This is actual clay. I nod. We've apparently there's a bigger, badder sorcerer out there than I suspected. He made a man out of clay, an eight foot clay man. I think the term is golem. Jesus. And our dearly departed Phoenix found out what they're made for crushing skulls. If that thing is headed south, they're going to be in some serious trouble. Do you think a, a, a wizard could create many of those? 
Are they easy to make? Oh, lord, no. Most difficult. Probably requiring many weeks or months or even years of preparation. Jesus. My guess is he's only got the one toy. But now that you mention it, perhaps it is heading south on a mission. I mean, what else would it be doing? I've never seen any of those patrol in a swamp before. Slow. When did you say you were taking a caravan south? Uh, a couple more days, two days from here. Hell, if we had been in a caravan, if that thing moves as slow as it does, we would have run right into it on the road. Yeah. You think that that thing was an ambush for us? For you, I doubt it. My guess is it's heading south, looking to crush some poor soul's head down there. Maybe oh, in Keygate, or... It's a good thing we didn't find that that light yesterday, if this is what's coming from it. Although, if you think that thing, that light only has one of these critters, now would be the optimal time to find it. I nod. On the other hand, if it has more than one, I would like to uh, forfeit my fee for today and leave. As I said, it's highly unlikely that this wizard keeps more than one. But if he is powerful enough to... Well, the guard dog is away. So now would be the time to poke around the front yard. Okay. Let's... let's... I, I point to where the spot on the path that the, the golem burst from and see if I can locate its trail or at least roughly guess which direction it was coming from. Yeah, you, you wander back to where the golem came from, or what you're calling a golem. It is nowhere to be found. The, there's a red spot of, of phoenix on the ground. And you, you can see the branches that have been broken in its wake. It leaves a, I mean, we're not going to call it a clear trail, but there is a section of clear trail where, you know, this tree branch was just snapped and this bush was flattened. Um, however, the swamp is murky and the ground is soft and sometimes filled with water. If you come across a watery section, you're not going to be able to follow the trail at all. But up until the watery section, the ground is soft enough that you can easily follow the, the path. I take it there's a watery section coming up? There's a watery section coming up. <laughs> oh, well, Bo Hope and I will follow the trail. Okay. The trail goes for about a half mile before it plunges into water. Give me a perception check. <laughs> 20. Another failed perception check. <laughs> Which is strange, because your perception's 12. You'd expect you to pass every other one. Uh, okay. So you, you get to this watery section and look out, and you you can't see any signs of where this thing would have come from. Um, but it seems like it's been going in roughly a straight line, correct? Yeah, that seems to be pretty much a straight shot. So I will see if we can circle around this this pedal or whatever it is and make our way to like the exact opposite side of the pedal. Not too much of a problem. You make your way back to the other side. And sure enough, once you find your way over here, it's like a good 150 feet, though, from mm -hmm. end to end. So you have to like walk pretty far around. Uh, you find these deep set footprints in the ground. They sink maybe three inches. Mm hmm. Should have grabbed some pieces of pieces of Phoenix to use as a receipt to get my money back from this wizard for smashing my my mercenary. <laughs> I don't know if my negotiations will go as well without without any evidence. <laughs> At least I got a witness. So we. <laughs> what are you doing? 
<laughs> I'm gonna go knock on this wizard's tower and tell him that he owes me money for the for the face that he just smashed. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's see what I find. So I'm gonna f I'm following these deep set footprints. Uh, let's hold on for a sec. The stream seems to be lagging out for a moment. Let's give it a sec to stabilize. Stabilize. Shall we take a break? We're creeping up on an hour. Um. Let's let's okay. Yeah, the stream is stabilized. Let's not quite take our break yet. Uh, you continue walking in this direction, and sure enough, you pop out. Uh, ooh, let's get rid of these other guys who are no longer with you. You pop out in front of this tower. Let it load. I knew there was a tower. It's you and Bohep. Mm -hmm. um, I think you should be able to touch yourself and move yourself. Oh, I can touch myself. Oh, and I also have control over my token. Yeah. Um, so, is that the tower right in front of us? That is the tower right in front of you. It doesn't look all that big. Is that like a bush right there? Move your character. Well, gonna, like, Drag yourself. Yeah. Your, your line of sight is blocked. Yeah. Oh, the, the line on the bottom, the, the right side, the, it's just more grassy, marshy shit all around you with occasional trees. It's just, I've mm -hmm. cut up the map into sections. Oh, uh, something is blocking my vision right there, to the south. Is that, uh, that, that, I mean, it's just con marsh continues onward. There's nothing interesting down there. All right. I'll gesture, I'll gather Bohep's attention. Is this up here like difficult terrain or something or is it just... No, like, it's just that's more, that's like a, a watery section versus the, the soft grassy section. Is there a door on the... I don't know. Do, do you see a door? Bohep, go over there. <laughs> yes, miss. Yes, my lord. <laughs> I don't see a door, my lord. So, okay. I will start inspecting the tower. Like the outside for any... many devices, any writing. Can I roll a perception check or an intelligence check? Um, it looks like the tower has four floors to it. I can see windows. Uh, you can see a few windows scattered throughout. Mm -hmm. um, the the, fir the ground floor has no windows and no doors. The second floor has a window on the north side. The third floor has a window on the east side. And the fourth floor has three windows. One on the east, one on the south, and one on the west side. No doors. Is there? Is there any writing? Any runes? Or is it just plain stone? It is plain stone. Yes, plain undecorated stone. How high up is it to the first window? It is on the halfway up the second floor. It's a small window, so I'm going to say 13, 14 feet up. Hmm. I have to get creative if I want to scale that. Well, maybe there's another way in. Um, so, I, I mean, okay, I, I would like to spend a few minutes here inspecting the, the ground level of the tower to see if I can find any weak points. Hmm. Yeah, any loose bricks or, you know, pushing on things, feeling around. It all I, seems pretty solid. I don't know if that's. But give me a perception check. Just see if you figure something out. I finally passed one. Yeah, it's all pretty solid. There's there's no loose anything. Well, I did a pretty good job of designing a tower you can't get into. Uh, 
um, do I think that I would have any chance at all of scaling the wall to that second story window? It would be rough, but it could be done. A rogue could probably do it pretty easily. Yes, but I am no rogue. You are no rogue indeed. Um, do you have any tools to make your job easier? No, I'm probably, yeah. I'm probably I will give you a 20% chance to climb it then. I'll say, hey, hey, Bohap, come over here so that I can get a closer look at that window. How tall is Bohap? He's like 5'11", five, 5'10". All right. And I'm about 5'9". So even if so, if I'm standing on his shoulders, I might be able to reach it, but this is kind of a harebrained scheme. We may wind up falling I mean, if you're asses. standing on his shoulders, you're probably... A a few inches short I can of probably the window. reach the window sill. Well, no, because if you're standing on his shoulders, you're not standing at five ten. You're standing at like five yeah. five. And if you're five five, how tall are you? Uh, taller than that, but not much. Five nine. So and then. So five five and five out. nine is eleven and change, and it's twelve or thirteen Plus, feet up, maybe fourteen feet so up. I may be able to tickle the window sill or like yeah. do like a weird counter, counter strike jump from his back. If he jumps and then, if you jump and he jumps and then you jump off of him while he's mid-jump, you could do it. So do you want to roll like a dexterity or a... Give me, give me a dex check to see if you don't tumble over during this climbing up Bohep maneuver. I would probably take falling damage, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 22. All right, so you, you managed to get on Bohep's shoulders, no problem. And then it's just a matter of I mean, jumping and trying to grab the windowsill. Right? I, I can I'll, I can probably have him stay still, right? And uh -huh. just, like, jump and probably knock him over and get a grip of the I mean, he can, like, brace himself against the, the thing to give a little... And put himself at a slight angle, so... I'm glad that he's... Uh, uh, what are you doing with your quarter staff? Like, your quarter staff is going to stay out on the ground. You can't take it up with you. It's probably in the mud no, on the ground. Yeah, it's, it's next to the, the sticking in the mud. Okay, uh, give me a... Uh, give me a strength check to see if you can jump up and grab hold of the ledge and hold on. It's only like a six foot fall, right, for my feet. 24. You jump up, you grab the ledge, and hold on tight. Uh, I would say with nine strength and considering your weight. What's your con? Mm, my con. 11. Okay, so you're you have decent pretty strength, decent con. Down. You're you're pretty average. You can do a pull up, I'm sure, especially if you kick and scramble against the wall. Yeah. You can pull yourself up. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I am a little bit encumbered. I'm like lightly encumbered, but I'm I'm pretty light. One sixty five pounds with nine strength. I should be able to scramble a pull up. You drag yourself into this room which appears to you to be a kitchen of sorts. And there is a staircase. Yes. There is a stone staircase and a wooden staircase. The stone staircase goes down? Stone staircase goes... I'm sorry, it's all wooden staircase. It's just that in this instance, the, the gray is what leads down and the brown leads up, just so that it's not confusing. I'm going to poke around the kitchen for a bit. Is there, like, fresh food? There's everything that you see on the table around you. <laughs> um, Zoom nice. on in. I provided plenty of detail. <laughs> um, so it looks like we got like some some bread and some and a knife. No, no, that, that, yeah. Where's the bread? There's no fucking bread. What's that little round thing up there? Oh, it's totally bread. Yeah. A loaf of bread. Let's is this pot bo this pot is boiling? That's a, a tea kettle, yeah. And the fire is on. Yep. I'm gonna take a peek down the stairs. Okay. Yes. You peek down the staircase. I think I'm zoom out of this shit. And whoop. you show up over here. Um, you're on the base floor. The staircase ends. 
and there's a large stone door in front of you. There's some sacks to one side, some barrels and some boxes to the other. The barrels and boxes are kind of underneath the staircase a little bit. Um, and there's a, a stone doorway with a wooden door in front. I open the door. <laughs> the door opens. Where's my other thing in the jobber? Um, well, that's not right. The door opens out, and you are back in the, the swampy area. I take a step outside. Was the door, I keep the door, like, stand in the doorway. Is it, like, just a concealed door? or? Uh, no, now that the door is open, you actually see a door. There, There's an actual door in the, the, the building. <clears throat> Magic. Well, this wizard is a lot more powerful than I am. Bohap. <laughs> what? You up for some trespassing? He shrugs. Magic curious. Possession doesn't really mean anything. I like that attitude. Except for my things. Right. <laughs> right. Um, I think we're about up for a break. Shall we investigate the tower yeah. when we get back? Let's do that. We'll see you guys on the other side of our break. And as we enter our three of our marathon, of our 72-hour marathon stream. See you guys in a yes, bit. Indeed.